Because we realize as a church, the body of Christ has been duped to assume that we are religious. We are not a religious institution. This is not a religious entity, and this is not a religious church. Jesus never came to give us religion. Say that. Say, Jesus never came to make me religious. The Bible makes it real, real clear that Jesus came, and at the end of his life, he started preaching about the kingdom. In fact, the Bible says when Jesus came, he told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. The word church does not mean the word religious institution. The word church is the word ecclesia, which means my government. It was God's objective to bring the kingdom government to colonize earth so that the principles of heaven would come to this earth. Now, my job as a child of God is to colonize or to bring the principles of the kingdom to this planet. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Now, having said all of that, we've been hitting this because we realize that in order for us to influence the earth, put up slide one, it takes the church world to realize that we were not just placed on this earth to feel good, to live good, and to be good. How many folk know when God created you, he gave you an assignment for life? Let me say it again. In case, make sure you get it. Touch somebody say, I have an assignment. There is an assignment for my life. Now, why is this so important? Because whenever there is a problem in the universe, you've heard me teach this, God always addresses a problem the same way. Whenever there is a problem, God always births a baby. Does that make sense? So that means God saw a problem and he birthed you. That means you were created by God to come to this planet and fix something was, that is broken. You are a key to a broken situation. That means the enemy knows that too. And his objective is to try to derail you. Now, how does God fix the situation? One of the things that God recognizes is that when God gave us this earth, he told us to dominate. Touch somebody say, I was called to dominate. All right, y'all ain't saying, let me say, touch somebody and say, I was called to be the big dog. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. You, you follow what I'm saying? To you? God called me to be the big dog. God called me to dominate the earth. The first thing God ever said is, let us make man in Genesis 1, and let them have dough. You touch somebody say, I'm supposed to be in control. But what happened was Satan stole control from man. And when Satan, that's why you got to understand, when God put us in a garden, God put us in a perfect garden. One of the reasons people struggle with the body of Christ is because they say, well, if God loves me, why is there sickness? If God loves me, why is there death? If God loves me, why is there pain? You must understand, when God places us here on earth, he places us in a garden where there is perfection. There was no death. There was no sickness. There was no disease. There was no anger. There was no pain. He put us in a perfect garden. It took seven days for man to ruin it. And so you keep saying, well, God, why is there pain? God says, I put you in a perfect place. You messed up, you sinned, and God says, now my job is to give it back to you. Well, God, why don't you just put me back in it? Because this time you'll mess up in six. So God keeps putting us back in the garden. What happens is we'll mess up. So what God had to do is, no, let me take you down a training session and teach man how to live a life. So in the book of Revelations, he says, when I finish with you, you're going to be in a living a place where there's no more pain, there's no more sickness, there's no more death, and there's no more hurt. But I got to train mankind how to coexist in a perfect environment with the Spirit of God. Does that make sense to everybody? So with that said, what God says is, I need you to dominate the earth. How do I dominate the earth? There are seven major systems that control everything. These seven systems are the family, religion, 
In fact, if you've been called to dominate an area, touch somebody say, I've been called to dominate an area. If you've been called to dominate an area that I'm about to hit on, I want you to put your hand. You've been called to dominate the family area and set a model for family. Lift your hand up. You've been called to minister or be in the ministry. Keep your hand up to ministry and be in the ministry. Keep your hand up. You've been called to the education mountain. You're going to educate our children. Lift your hand up. You've been called to the business mountain. you got a spirit of entrepreneurship inside of you. Lift your hand up. You've been called to the government mountain. You're going to help get the politics on track. Lord Jesus, help us. Oh, I feel some glory all over that. Amen. See, see, let me just keep your hands up. Our job is to train a child so when they get older, they'll be able to infiltrate the government and bring godly principles. If you don't like what you see in the government, we got to start training this next generation to grow up and produce in a place, in a place where the devil tried to keep us out of. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Uh, so you've been called to the media mountain. Everybody who's been called to the media mountain. Here, here's the thing I realize, like the media mountain, we used to like have some people lift their hands, but let me say this. Here's, here's how I can tell you whether you've been called to dominate the media mountain. If you are on social media, if you have Facebook, Instagram, Uvu, Shutterfly, there's no more Uvu, Snapchat, if you got smoke signals you can get from your house, you are called to the media ministry. So let me ask again. Everybody that's called to media, lift your hands up. Hey, there we go. There we go. There we go. If you've been called to arts and entertainment, lift your hands up. Now let me speak a quick word. If your hand is lifted for any of those, lift them up right now. In the name, Lord Jesus, Father, I speak over every covenant child in this room that they are getting ready to be used like never before. And God, you are getting ready to unleash their gifts and their talents and their gifts are getting ready to put them in special places and it's getting ready to make room for them and the enemy will never be able to stop the gift you have planted in their life. So be it in the name, Lord Jesus. God is getting ready to use every Every hand that is lifted in this room. If you are a believer, open up your mouth and give God a shout. So, so quickly, as we go through this, as we quickly, I got five more minutes. As we deal with the mountains, I want to take a moment and deal with one of the most critical mountains of the seven. The media mountain. The media, take me to slide number five, please. The media dictates everything in our life. Number five. The media dictates our habits, our identification, our motivation. The media, people, the studies show that the average person is on their social media a minimum of five to six hours a day. You're sitting at dinner table. Back in the day when we sat at dinner table, let me, I'm going to give you, this is going to sound very uh, 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 old-fashioned and, and um, archaic and, and something that, that, that will, will probably seem out of sorts and, and you may not be able to understand totally. But back in the day when we were at the dinner table and we sat at dinner, we actually talked. How many times when you see the dinner, there's five people at the dinner table, and everybody is in their own world. People even got the nerve to be sitting next to each other, texting each other. <laughs> what would you like for dinner? I want the pizza. <laughs> because media has taken over our entire lives. And you must understand, the media even deals and it, it, it modifies our habits. It deals with our inhibitions. It tells us our observations and our practices. And what we found out is a lie when told through the media 10 times literally looks like and becomes the truth in people's minds. So you got to understand how powerful the media is. Now, how the media works is no one principle of the media causes instant change. Uh, said the best by Wilder, Wilbur Scram, he says, media messages do not bypass existing attitudes or norms, but over a long term, they drip into us piece moment by moment by moment. And they begin to identify and redefine who we are. 
And so how do you take prayer out of school? It doesn't come by one action. It comes by drip, 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 drip. How do you redefine what a man is? No one's going to believe it by one action. But if I can get the media to cause it to drip, 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 I drop it in CBS, I drop it in Fox, I drop it in ABC, and I cause you to see it. Over time, now it has worn me down, and I have allowed the media to redefine who I am. And go to slide number two, and this is what it looks like when we allow the media to take control of our lives. It is literally the enemy putting downloads in our mind, telling us what to wear, what to think, what to say. I guarantee that 90% of you are wearing something you saw in the media. I guarantee that many of us that are in this room, we watch what we see advertised in the media. Do you realize you see 50,000 advertisements per day? 50,000 thousand small drips that realize that it's going to eventually wear us down to get us to see things from its vantage. Why? Because Satan tapped into something that is so powerful that the moment we get the revelation, it will change our life. No more drip. No more drip. We're going to come back to the drip. We're going to come back to the drip. We're going to come back to the drip. Thank you for the drip. Thank you for the drip. Y'all were dripping really well. You drip. It was wet all on the stage. God bless you. You did your good drip. Yes, you did. Praise the Lord. But, but listen to me. Satan tapped into something real powerful. You know what Satan tapped into? He tapped into, hold up. If words are that powerful, then I can use words to infiltrate man's minds, just like God uses words to change and bless people's lives. And what I'm realizing is we are not really understanding the power of our words. Let me give you a recap from something we learned last week that's going to take me 37 seconds that changed the dynamic of every person in this room. We learned something that was so significant. The Lord God created everything, say everything, with two things. He created everything with the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the power of sound. Now watch this. Touch somebody and say, hold on now. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. In Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, in the beginning, say in the beginning. In the beginning, Elohim. I got to go. I don't have time to deal with it. The word Elohim does not mean many gods. The word Elohim means the God that is many. Why does God call himself the God that is many? Because what he's trying to tell you is you really can't understand who I am in totality. I am God that is able to do everything at any time, anywhere I am. That's why when he introduced himself to Moses, he says, I am that I am. In other words, whatever you need me to be, that's what I be. So, so if you need me to be fine, this is I am. In fact, if I would be honest with you, I got to go quickly. What Elohim really means is the name of God that is too vast to even speak. He said to really say the name God would never give justice to who God is. So it says, who is God? God is. How do I say it? You can't even put it. Elohim, the God that is so vast, so deep. See, the old folks got it right. They said he was too wide, you can't get around him. They said he was too low, you can't go under him. They said he was too high, you can't go above him. You just got to go through the Y'all better go ahead with your bad self. I'm trying to tell you. So what God says, I am alien. You can't even pronounce who I am because who I am to pronounce means you got to limit me to your understanding, but you can't even understand who I really am. I, I, if I had time, I would explain to you that you must understand that, that Einstein began to talk about a fourth dimension, a fourth dimension. And he says in the third, the first, second, and third dimension, there was time. But he says in the fourth dimension, there was no time. You got to understand, the Bible says that God exists in the invisible realm. If you look at Ecclesiastes, it says everything under heaven is time, but above How many people know that the Bible is already where the world is trying to catch up to? Science is just realizing there is a realm that has no time. That's 
that's the realm where God exists in. That's why God can step into your beginning, into your middle, and to your end. God can set things up in your future, then step out of time, and then look at your whole life, see what is needed, then step into your life and put it there, then step out of your life because God is not limited to the time of man. Y'all better grab what I'm saying. See, you keep trying to put God in time, but the Bible already told you God has no beginning. He says, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. We deal with the second everlasting, which is everlasting future, but we forget about everlasting past, which means to God, he had no beginning. So in the beginning, the Bible says God. In the beginning, God steps out of nothing, out of the invisible realm, out of the fourth dimension, into this dimension. And the Bible says that God does two things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of thee. Say darkness. Look at this, child of God. God tells you how to deal with a dark situation. Ever been in a dark situation? Ever had a mess hit your life? Ever had a problem hit your life? God steps out and says, let me tell you how to deal with a mess. The first thing he says, when a mess came, God says he released the Holy Spirit. I dare you, can I just take three? I dare you, to, before you go to work tomorrow, say, Holy Spirit, meet me there in the name of Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, I need you to deal with my supervisor. I need you to deal with that one that's trying to cheat me out of my money. Holy Spirit, I need you to deal with that one that's trying to get me out of my job. Holy Spirit, I need you to talk to them about them folk that are trying to talk me out of my job and talk about me behind my back. Holy Spirit, I ask you in the name, Lord, to be dispatched to the place that I'm going. Set the path for me when I get there so when I get there, your anointing will already be in the house. Oh, I dare somebody right now to the sound of my voice to say, Holy Spirit, go to my family, go to my finances. Holy Spirit, meet me at the doctor's office this week. Set a path right there. That healing is already, I'm talking to somebody. Healing is already there. All I got to do is step into an environment that the Holy Spirit has already taken care of. Sit down. Sit down. Only got 30 seconds. Sit down. Y'all preaching and shouting too much. God dealt with a mess. He says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. It was void and it was dark. So how do you handle it, God? By two natures. It says, I release the spirit of God. Holy Spirit. The Holy, he says, and the spirit of God hovered. <sighs> Hover over my job. Hover it. Hover over my family. Hover it. Hover over my fine. Hover it. I'm trying to get somebody. You better grab what I'm saying. The Spirit of God. Hover it. Lord, while I'm on the beltway, I hover it. Lord, while I'm walking, hover it. Lord, while I'm asleep and I am unconscious, I just ask you, Holy Spirit, to just begin to... Hold up. I got to go. It gets deeper than that. The Spirit of the Lord hovered. Now watch the next words. And God said. Listen to me carefully. Words are the most powerful entity God has given in the universe. Words are so powerful that God says, I exalt my above my now if my name is everything and you can use words how powerful are the words at your disposal y'all ain't getting this yet but this getting ready to break into some stuff y'all better hear words are so powerful that they work at every dimension lift your hands up clap your hands open your mouth give God a shout stop everything that happened happened because you created it with your words Words are sound waves. Science has now found that sound waves are hidden in everything, including the atom. It is finding that sound waves, check this out, respond to other sound waves. That's why if you have a glass and you reach the right note, 
the sound waves will burst the glass. Why? Because inanimate objects down into its subatomic level have sound waves that respond to sound waves. Why is that so important? Because I am made up of atoms. Within my atoms, there are nucleus, there are neutrons, there are protons, and within those, there are sound waves. So if I got a part of my body that ain't right, I speak my sound into my atoms, into my body, and I call it to come into conformity with God's word. Y'all ain't ready yet. Y'all ain't ready yet. Y'all ain't ready yet. Touch somebody and say, you better understand how bad you really are. Sit down. Why do you think in the garden of Eden? Listen, shh, shh, shh. how does God train us with that? God train us. God train us. The first thing God did, he said, Adam, let me train you on how powerful your words are. Call this there. Any animal you see, call it to you. He says, animal, what is it? It's a dog. The Bible says, and it is. You see, see that? What is that? That's a cat. It is. God was saying, you don't understand, Adam. Whatever it was, it stopped being that and became something else. Because your words affected its atoms. Your words defined, created what it was. I'm trying to help somebody. You better hear what I'm saying to you. Your words create your life. Your words are so powerful. The Bible says if you decree a thing, look at what it says. It says, it didn't say it'll happen. That's not what it says. It says, it shall be established. What is the difference? He says, if you decree a thing, it's going to become what it wasn't. So, if you happen up on the doctor's report and you don't like it, decree what it needs to be. So, if you happen on a situation and you don't like it, start speaking about what it's going to be. Because if you decree a thing, you are establishing or creating what you want it to be. See, if I were you, I wouldn't miss this. I would just say, you know what, preacher? I need you to hold on the rest of your message. I got a couple of things I need to do. First of all, let me speak to my health. Say, in the name, Lord Jesus, be healed. Next, I need to speak to my money. In the name, Lord Jesus, come forth. Next, I need to speak to my family. In the name, Lord Jesus, stop being crazy. Next, I need to speak to my future. In the name, Lord Jesus, fulfill everything and fulfill every promise that God said was going to come to pass. I speak. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Inserts from a book called The Glory Invasion about sound waves. It says some scientists especially those in string theory believe that the smallest particle is not an electron or the neutron or the proton, it is sound. Sound waves or vibrating strings have notes. Some have taken a tiny subatomic particle, a neutron or a proton, and split it, and in its smallest form, they have found more particles inside the subatomic particle of vibrating sound waves. Remember, sound responds to sound. I break a grass, glass because the particles, the atoms in the glass are responding to the sound waves. I'm trying to help somebody out. I'm trying to help somebody out. Man was created from the dust. The Hebrew word for dust is the word afar, and it does not mean dirt. It means the smallest created particle. It is now being studied through experiments in Japan that researchers find that water particle Water molecules on their subatomic level actually respond to sound and even voice recognition. It is being said now that within the atoms of a rock, they can hear the sound within the molecules of a rock. They said that when they took satellites into space, they heard sound coming from black holes. Why is that? Because God created everything with sound. So when you got a bad situation, start speaking into that thing. Oh, I need somebody that's ready for this right now. 
Right there, you see a molecule. Within the molecule, within the neutron and the proton, they are finding there are sound waves. Why do you think the Bible says that even the rocks will cry out? I need somebody who knows the Holy Ghost to start creating some stuff in your future. Why do you think God says death and life are in the power of my Whatever you say it is, it shall be. Adam, what is it? It's a cat. It is. Adam, what is it? It's a lion. It is. Adam, what is it? It's a, it's a Tyrannosaurus. It is. Why? Because I gave you the power to create what it is to be. Now sit down, because I only got three minutes left. So now, let's flip the script. God knows what he created, and Satan sat there as Lucifer and watched God. Spoke, boom, it happened. Spoke, boom, it happened. Spoke, boom, it happened. And Satan said, wow. So now I see. God changes everything by the power of sound. Satan, who is the chief imitator, decided, let me use God's mechanism against God's people. The first media moment was in the Garden of Eden. The serpent was the commentator and Adam and Eve were the audience. The serpent slithered in and the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1, now the serpent was the trickiest cat in the camp. Tell somebody, say, you better watch them brothers that slither. Sometimes you can just be too smooth. I'm just saying, you just, and, and, and some of y'all, if you start listening with your spiritual eyes, I'm talking to some of my sisters, just listen with your spiritual ears, just the spiritual ears. Start listening with your, you'll hear, you'll hear, hey, baby. How you doing, sexy? Turn that frequency up. The Holy Ghost is giving me a download. That's a snake. Uh, 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 uh. Run, run, run. No, I'm serious. You start, you, you turn your spiritual free. You hear his. I've been in business meeting with people and I hear, I hear, well, pastor, I think this is a good idea. Now the serpent was the slickest cat in the camp. And he started to question Eve on what God said. He said to her, watch this, yea, have God said? You will not eat of every tree in the garden? Now why is this so important? Let me explain to you what the media is. Let me go back to this. The media is from the word medium. The word medium is broken down into several different pieces. There is, that reading ahead of me, there is um, the word medium, which means go between. So there is a size media. The size medium is between the small and the large. Does that make sense to you? There is Jesus who is the great mediator. He is the go-between. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, it says, and there is one God and one mediator, one medium, one between. One God, one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. So whenever God wants to get a word to us, he sends it through Jesus Christ. Because he is the mediator. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right, uh, 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 come on, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up. No, 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 oh, no, uh, um, 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 um. Yeah, David, come here, David, come here, David, come here, David. Hurry, David, come on, David, come on, man. Show me you work out. Show, run, come on, come on, run, run for us, run, come on. David is speaking Spanish right now. So right now we've got Spanish speaking people that listen to David. Now watch this. Now, David, I'm going to mess you up. Yo voy a decir algo, eh. 
Watch this. I'm going to start speaking something. What's your favorite scripture? Uh, yeah, that one. John okay. Yeah. I'm going to start saying something, but rather than saying what I'm saying, no, forget it. What's your favorite song? Uh, ooh, uh, favorite song okay. Uh, no, no, no. What's your favorite song, Pre-Saved? Uh, no, nah, milkshake. No, what is it? No. <laughs> rock with me. Rock, rock with me. Though. Okay. All rock right. Me. I want you to sing that in Spanish while I'm preaching, okay? All right. Ready? Do your best. Ready? Okay. Set. Go. All right. Now, the Por Bible favor, says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart conmigo. that God raised Jesus from the dead, Mueve thou shalt conmigo. be saved. Mueve conmigo. Quieres bailar conmigo. All right, stop, 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 Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. It doesn't even matter who the originator is. The power of the message is always in the mediator. No matter what I'm saying, how it's interpreted by the mediator has everything to do with the impact over the audience. If the mediator is corrupt, even though the message is powerful, then the people will be corrupted. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm trying to help somebody. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to help somebody. So, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how powerful the message is if the message is being distorted, manipulated, redefined, then the message is not getting clearly to those that are the audience and it will change how and what they hear. I mean, you're having too much fun. Give me that. Thank you. Give David a hand clap. The other medium is the witchcraft medium. A medium in witchcraft is a person that literally is an intermediary between the satanic spirit world and ours. So Satan says, Eve, you're getting a message from God. I need to come in as the mediator and reinterpret what you've heard. I'm going to show you something that's going to blow you away. I got the goal to hold me up. Verse 9, after Adam and Eve fall, and after they eat the tree, and they disobey God, and it says, and the Lord God called him to Adam and said to him, where are you, Adam? Adam, you are not in the right place. Why? Because sin will get you out of position. Sin will take you out of position. Let me say it again. Sin will take... David was supposed to be winning a battle and he was having sex with Bathsheba out of position and God punished him and kicked him out of his kingdom because he was in the wrong place. Sin will get you out of position every time. The purpose of sin is to rope you and pull you away from the glory cloud. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. Some of you right now, you in this room, you think you can do your sin and get away with it. And you don't realize every single time you get away, you move yourself further and further away from his glory. And then you keep wondering what happened. Because sin will pull you so far away that you never even remember how it was to be in his glory. Because what sin does is sin starts off with intoxicating you then it ends up killing you. But you are so, it's almost like the frog in boiling water. They take the frog and they put it in cool water. He may stay there, but they turn the heat up slower and slower. And unbeknownst to the frog, he will boil to death. Sin puts you in a place that you never planned on being, doing things with people you never planned on doing it with, doing stuff in a place that you never even thought you would get that far away from God. God comes on the scene and says, Adam, where are you? Now, I'm going to show you something I've been reading in the Bible for the longest time. I can't even finish this message right now because this is just too incredible. 
Check this out. Adam, where are you? And Adam says, I heard you. God, I remembered what you were saying. But I was afraid because I sinned. I got so far away from you that I was exposed. I was naked because I didn't even know who I was naked because I was under the glory cloud, so I was protected. But the moment I moved out of the glory cloud, now I was exposed on my own. I was naked. I hid myself. Now, this is the only part I wanted you to get. And God asked a question. And he said, who told you? Somebody came in and delivered a message that opened your ears and totally changed your direction. Who did you let get into the middle of you and I? And reinterpret what I told you. Who told you that is a man? I told you what a man was. Why did you let something get between you and I and reinterpret what a man is and what a woman is and what a family is? Y'all don't want to talk to the preacher today. You don't want to talk. You let a medium come in between you and I and tell you what a man was? Little girl, you let a medium, duh, medium, duh, media, come between me and you and tell you how a girl is supposed to dress? Why I'm seeing all your cleavage? Because the medium told you. Go back to slide number two. Why are you dressed that way? Because the medium told you how to dress? Why are you cussing? Because the medium told you how to cuss? Why are you acting up? Why you got an attitude problem? Because you don't watch too many hot Hollywood housewives of Hollywood and hell? And the medium... The medium, the witchcraft spirit. Oh, 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 you don't know? You don't know? Oh, that's really what it is. They said, I'm going to put my witchcraft, I'm going to put, I'm, in fact, let me find this Lord Jesus. Help me find this scripture, Father. Help me. Yeah, there you go. Jesus, you are a wonder worker. Look at what the Bible says in Revelations chapter 18, verse 23. It says, the light of a lamp will never shine again, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bridegroom will never be heard again. And he says, your merchants and the world import people. Watch this. By magic Spells, all the nations were led astray. You let the medium, uh, media, media tell you that smoking marijuana was fine? They told you that marijuana was not addictive and you believed it. You let them step in between you and I and redefine. So now instead of, see, you must understand when I created you, I created you to dominate the earth. Now you're letting the earth dominate you. What are you talking about, preacher? What has that got to do with anything? You must understand marijuana comes from, you know, that little cannabis thing y'all been growing in your place. You take the little cannabis thing, you light it on fire, you put it in a little piece of paper, you wax it, you lick it. I ain't never done it, but I'm hearing y'all talk about it. And now you smoke it. And now you can't live your life without it because God created you to dominate it. But now the earth as a curse is dominating you. Let me show you this last story, and I'm going to go. I'm going to show you the portrait of how the media um, wants to come into somebody's life and stand between you and God 
and reinter. That's why the church has become so weak. Because now, 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 now listen, listen to the analogy. If Eve represents earth because she gives birth, she represents the earth. Adam represents the priest. He's the covering. So when Eve ate of the fruit, the covering had no response. The covering represents the priest or the church. So that means while the, while the world was sinning, the church was watching. And instead of the church saying, don't do it, the church said, let me have some too. This stuff scared me so much. Let me show you. I got to go. I know it's time. If you would give me 30 seconds, I will read it to you and tell you to stand up and run home. First Kings 13 and 7 tells us how the devil works to get between as a medium God and us and reinterpret to every man what God said. It says, then the king said unto a man of God, come to the place with me and have something to eat and I'll give you a gift. But the man of God said to the king, even if you gave me half of everything you own, I wouldn't go with you. I would not eat or drink with you in this place. For the Lord God gave me a command. You must, he said to me, you must not eat or drink anything while you are there. And do not return to Judea by the same route that you took to get there. As it happened, there was an old prophet living in Bethel, and his sons came to the house and told him what God had said to this man. The old prophet asked them, hey, where did this dude go? So he showed their father, they showed their father, he got on his horse and he began to run there. And the Bible says he quick and sat on his donkey, rather, went, on, went and the Bible says, sat on his donkey, mounted it, went, and he rode after the man of God, found that man of God sitting on a tree. Old prophet asked him, he says, are you the man of God who came from Judea? I sure am, he replied. He says, now watch this now. Already the old prophet knows he's not supposed to do it. But he says, man of God, he says, come home with me, eat some food, drink some wine, have a good time, come to my crib. It's all good. Just come to me, come, 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 have a party, drink Bacardi, have your birthday party. <laughs> That's what he was saying. He said, come, come hang out with me. And he says, no, I go to the city of praise. My bishop and pastor tell me that I am not supposed to club. Boy, that was the weakest clap. You done told on yourself. You done told on yourself. I saw somebody say, ooh, glory. I go to the city of praise. I can't participate in that type of ungodly activity. I go to the city of praise. I live by a higher standard. I live by God's principles. I am a kingdom citizen. I do not give myself to dogs or doggish situations. I'm just saying. So the man said, your bishop and pastor not looking. I mean, he said, uh, no, I cannot. I, I, I'm not allowed to do that. But the old prophet answered and said, hey, look, um, I'm a medium too. I'm a prophet too, just as you are. And an angel gave me this command, you lying dog. You lie. See, the media lies and tells you this is happiness when it's not. The media tells you this is success when it's not. Remember we've been talking about success the last few weeks and I showed you the video, remember I showed you the panel of Jim Curry where Jim Curry said, I wish that everybody could get all the money they want, get all the homes they want, get all the success they want, only to find out that everything they got never made them happy. Watch this, watch this. He says, he says, but the old prophet says, hey, I'm a prophet too. Now angel came and gave me a command of the Lord too. He told me to bring you to my house Give you some drinks, some good strong drinks, some good strong, strong drink, and feed you. But the old man was lying. I know you're lying. Your lips are moving. Tell me who you think you are. Okay. okay. 
All right, all right. So they went back together, and a man of God ate and drank at the prophet's home. Then while they were sitting at the table, see how the media draws you in? While they were sitting at the table, a command came from the Lord God through that same, because the media, see the, see the media is a trip. The media will give you a little lie and a little truth. That's why you need to get media out the way and go directly to God yourself. So he switches on him, and, and the same man that lied, that's why you got to be careful. Because remember, he was used by the devil, and now all of a sudden God intervenes. Touch him, I say, you need to go to God yourself. That's why Jesus says the veil of the temple was rent. I don't have to go to another man to confess my sins, but I can go directly to the throne room of God myself. What if I'm going to somebody, you know, I mean, there's a the Catholicism believes you got to go to the man and, and confess your sins, and then he's supposed to take your sins to God, then he gets penance, he comes back from God. And to, but, but what if I'm going to tell a man, hey, tell him my sin, and he sin? How are you going to take my sin and you got sin? Somebody got to get it right. That's why I can go to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, he who knew no sin made no sin. Therefore, I can become righteous through him who had no, had no sin in his life. Uh-huh. He said, stop reading ahead of me. I see y'all already. While I was sitting at the table, command of the Lord came from the old lion prophet, and he cried out to the man of God. He says, man of God from Judea, this is what the Lord is saying. Oh, now you're going to tell me what God is saying? He says, you have defied the word of the Lord and have disobeyed the command of the Lord your God. You came back to this place, by my invitation, by the way, you came back to this place and ate and drank and where, I, where he told you not to eat and not to drink. Because of this, your body will not be buried in the grave of your ancestors after the man of God finished eating and drinking, the old prophet saddled his own donkey for him, and the man of God started off again. And as he was traveling along, a lion, came out and killed him. His body laying there on the road with his donkey. Donkey, you couldn't help. Stand up on your feet. Whew. Who's your go-between? You keep letting the media define who you are. Young man, if you can't afford Nike shoes, don't let the media make you spend your last dime. Go get you some plastic shoes, put them on because you're royalty, they instantly become royal plastic. The media tries to tell you that you are defined by what you wear. God says what you wear is defined by whose you are. I'm a child of God no matter what I wear. I am an heir, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I am more than a conqueror no matter what I wear. We are in a state of bringing back God's definition to who we are because the medium, the go-between, the media has got between us and God to redefine who we are. That's why we're so confused. Because I heard your voice in the garden, God, but I didn't know because the, the serpent told me he was sent. And so what we got, go back to my slide number two, please. This is a betrayal of the church. Portrayal, portrayal, portrait of the church. If we wear what we wear because the media told us, then we start saying what we say because the media said it. Then we start doing what, we say, what we're doing because the media told us to do it. We start living the way we live and we start being confused. Satan's objective is to redefine everything God has. There's a battle for one thing, and that is for your mind. Your mind is your thoughts, your intellect, how you process. Your mind is your soul. Now listen to me carefully. God cannot come back to earth and change the world. Listen to me, church. If you haven't heard anything else, hear this. 
The Bible says, God says in Genesis 1, let us create man and let them dominate. When God did that, God stepped away from the earth and said, now I will no longer come to earth except through Christ. I've got to come into a body and save mankind. Then that body leaves. Why is that? Because there's a rule that only physical bodies can make themselves plain on work or operate on earth. That's why God took the dirt. God says only bodies that are made of dirt can operate on earth. You understand that? God says that's why we can't, that's why nobody can live in space without a space suit. Because only that which is created, whatever you come from is your source. So if fish come from the water, fish must have water to have us to live. If, 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 if plants, if a, if, a, if, a, if a tree comes from the ground, the tree will die because everything has to live within its source. God gave the earth to man. The source of earth, of man, is the earth. We have to live on earth. God says, I created man, made him from the earth so he could dominate in that area. So I'm not coming back. I'm not going to reach my hand through the clouds and fix your job. I'm not going to reach my hands through the clouds and work. But what I am going to do is I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. Let him reach through you and fix it. So now here's the problem. God says, in order for me to operate, I need a body. I cannot do what I'm supposed to do if I don't have an available vessel. Well, Satan says the same thing. Hold up. God is a spirit. Satan is a spirit. Spirits, unbeknownst to you, cannot walk around and cause change. Spirits have to inhabit bodies, and the bodies cause change. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives within us and leads and guides us unto all truth. You have to have the Holy Spirit so God can use you. Or you can have another spirit the purpose of the media unless the kingdom of God dominates it is the media sells the spirit from which it came Satan got in between and said let me go ahead and start filling your minds with misinformation what is a man be confused what is a girl well, so, so the question is young brother same question I'm going to ask you that God asked Adam. Who told you that? I'm not even asking what they told you. I want to know who. Because when I know who, I know what the objective is. Everything got new in the garden by a suggestion. Who told you that? Who told you you were poor? Who told you you have low self-esteem? Who told you you weren't good enough? Who told you you weren't capable? Who told you you weren't anointed? Who? Somebody got in the middle of my message, God said, and distorted what I said. We got to make some decisions. We got to put some godly people in godly places to do godly things. Stop letting social media be a vent for demonic activity. Everybody doesn't need to know who you mad with. Stop telling people off on social media. Stop letting the devil use you on so you are you have been there. See what God did. Satan thought it was him, but God it was actually slick. God said, how am I going to dominate the media? Okay. Satan is using the airwaves and the media, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise up a group of people, and they're going to start typing kingdom stuff. Yeah. 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 Who am I talking about in this room? Yeah. Oh, but you don't know. They hurt me at work, and I'm going to tell everybody off. Listen, if you keep complaining, that means you have no prayer life. But, but I need to give everybody a piece of my mind. Do that. But before you do that, make sure you run by Romans 12 too, which says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you give them your mind, it'll actually be God's mind, which will be God's agenda and not your agenda. Oh, y'all don't want to talk, but I'm trying to help somebody get free this morning. 
We got to change this world. And I'm tired of all these sermons where people get shouting and running and flipping and crying. I am so tired of impotent, irrelevant church. I'm so, it is, I am sick and tired of us playing this church game. How the pastor preach him, love, preach up and down, lay hands on 500 people, and they still walk out crazy. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm about to turn 49 in a few weeks. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe. You took about 30 off of that. But, but I, I've been in church now almost 49 years, Minister Elsie, and I have seen so much impotence. I have seen so much emotions that lead to nothing. I have seen so much inactivity. I am tired of it. We have got to start living this stuff. I'm tired of it. God says, I need my kingdom to come. Stop faking it. Live this thing. We fell out. Yeah, but, 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 but did you change? God, God, God's going to get my enemies. Maybe, newsflash, maybe God don't want to get your enemies. Maybe God wants to use you to save your enemies. But, but we too weak for that because all we want God to do is fight for us instead of letting God use us. Y'all don't want to talk to a preacher. It's all good. It's all good. I'm tired of it. Church is impotent. Always got to get a feeling because we made it religion. This is not religion. This is instructional tools to change the government. And if God can't work through your body, because he's already working through Satan's body. He's already working through, 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 through. If you're not using your sound, sound, your voice changes everything. Go to slide number five, the last slide I gave you in the UK. Science is showing they're using sound wave therapy to deal with cancer. Because science is now picking up that beyond the cells are the molecules. And if I can affect the molecules, we'll heal the cells. Use your words. Molecules respond to molecules. They respond to sound waves because with embedded within them is sound. Start using your words. Stop letting the media speak on behalf of the church. Stop being crazy on the media and cussing people out and acting like fools on the media and then tell, yeah, the church is a trip, but thank God for the church. Yes, there is no perfection in the church and there was no perfection in the ark. The ark was nasty. There were animal dung all over, doo-doo all over the place. Animals were urinating all over the place. Animals were going crazy. It was bad in the ark, but I would rather be in the ark than outside in the waves. They fake in the church. I'd rather be with some fake folk getting converted than with some real folk going to a real hell. Lift up your hand, city. Father, I really ask you to give us a spirit of sincerity and honesty that we'll be activated and launched and motivated and not be susceptible and gullible to the world and the media and its direction. Father, I just ask you right now to give us new spirits of understanding that we, your people, Father, would not be manipulated, but we will be dominators. And I ask you right now to use our fingers and our hearts and our thoughts and our minds. Use our voices. Don't let us be bitter, but let us be better. Let us be used by you, Father. And I ask this right now in the name of Lord Jesus. Every head by, every eye closed. You hear the Spirit of God right now speaking to you. And God is speaking strongly and urgently to you. And he's telling you that I need more of you. I need more of you. And the reason you know that because you want more from him. You need God to do more. So God says in order for me to give you more, you got to give me more. Let's make this an exchange. It starts off with a relationship. God, I need more of you and you need more of me. Let's, let's sign this contract, sign, sealed, and delivered. I'm yours. 
you are in this room and you feel the Spirit of God pulling you to say He needs more of you, when I count the three, lift your hands up. One, two, three. If your hand is lifted, run down here quick. Thanks for watching the City of Praise Ministries broadcast. To purchase this message in its entirety, visit cityofpraisechurch.com. The City of Praise family.